All right, hey guys, welcome to uh, this Let's Play video. In this video, we're going to be going over the chase, or um, if you are familiar with the Keith Snell series, level one in his romantic book, it would be called The Hunt by Cornelius Gurlitt. Um, this is the IMSLP version. You can go to imslp.org and get this for free. Uh, just check out the link in the description below and you can follow along all right so i'm going to play it first and we're going to see what it sounds like then we're going to talk about it and then you can go home and practice it on your own so here we go let's see here it's too hard I mean it's it's kind of fast you know man that's a lot of fun I love doing that I probably do the wrong fingering right there yeah but let's just start with the uh, the opening line so um, you're gonna have to keep your hand in kind of this extended position right here so your first finger is going to go on G. Let me write that in for you. So your first finger is going to go on G here. And then your third finger is going to go on C. All right. So um, if you notice, if you put your hand in a G five finger scale, then your third finger actually winds up on B. You see that? But we have to take our third finger and stretch to the, to the C. When we stretch to the C, we leave a gap between 1 and 3. You see that on the MIDI keyboard below? There's a gap right here. And it's going to stay pretty much in that position the entire time. Um, let's see here. Uh, and then here, it stretches even further. All right. So our third finger here is going to have to go to D. All right. So our third finger starts off on C. And then eventually when we get to the second line there, it's going to have to stretch up to D. And the reason that we do that is that so we can just keep the same fingering going, the same uh, the fingering pattern going. So here when we end with our fourth finger on that D um, just keep it on four like that and it's gonna go one four one four again and then one four and after this long hold right here so we're just holding this out and that's when we make the big switch we switch the fourth finger over to three so and then here's the switch ba, 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 ba. and then let's see what does the right hand do after that oh my goodness okay so here we're gonna have to stretch stretch your fourth finger now I, I don't normally advocate doing this here stretching the fourth finger and fifth finger because if you look at the hand these don't stretch apart very well but I have said before in other videos and I will say again that there are occasions when it is appropriate and necessary to stretch the, four, uh, the fifth finger away from the fourth finger and this is one of those rare occasions okay so right here we need to stretch so now if you don't like that fingering I personally don't like that fingering I would switch the fourth finger here and I would put the third finger there instead because it's easier to stretch the third and second finger apart than it is to stretch the fourth and fifth finger apart now I know this is Cornelius Gurlitt and he has his own way of doing things I don't know if he actually um, 
this was his actual version or if this is just an edited version that is now under public domain. I don't know if this was his original fingering or not or if someone else did the fingering um, after he had passed on. But I would personally substitute this for four three instead of that right there because this is kind of painful it's it, it puts a lot of tension on the hand this not so much okay so let's see that part and again this would be a finger three if you were substituting that fingering right there so I don't know why they switch back right there because if you look here let's just take a look at this real quick this section so you got now what they have written here is that you're gonna take your fourth finger and move it back to D but why would you do that you wouldn't need to move your fourth finger back to D there's it's unnecessary because we can just keep our hand in this position right here you know so I would put second finger right there all right da -da, da -da, da -da. and that would be finger three I would just keep my hand open And then it does the same thing. Hmm. I don't know. Da -da 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 -da. Yep. I would put finger three right here. And I would I would switch back I would move the fourth finger back down to the D right here put your fourth finger back on D so we're gonna have to move right here all right so all right So I think that's all of the right hand. Let me play the right hand again one more time just to see how that fingering works and if I would change anything. So from the beginning, keep the fourth finger on that D and then here we're going to switch to third finger. Okay. And then I'm going to I'm going to add the left hand right here or else it's not going to sound right. So They put fourth finger back there, so. As a matter of fact, I take back what I said. I take it back. You have to understand this is my first time looking at this piece in detail. So I'm kind of learning this piece right along with you. Um, I think I would switch back. So from here, you know, you have that, da -da -da, and I would take the fourth finger and put it back on that D right there. So I'm going to write in another switch right here. So switch right there. And I am going to put the fourth finger here I do like that I do like that okay so we're here and that of course would be finger five that's a legitimate fingering right there and then we go back to And then, yeah, 
I move the fourth finger back here. Okay, so that is the way that I would play it. Um, all right, let's take a look at the left hand and see what the left hand is doing. So, Okay, so the left hand isn't doing anything too terribly complex. It's kind of just playing the downbeat of each measure. And there, it's kind of when uh, this all of a sudden becomes the melody. So the melody starts here. So this is the melody line. And it takes off like that. Um, which is why it's no longer out on the downbeat because the melody doesn't really start on the downbeat, does it? The melody starts here on beat three of each measure. Da -da, da -da, da -da. And so instead of moving the right hand down here to do that same, it's like, well, the left hand's already there, so why don't we just play the left hand right there? Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. So the left hand is kind of filling in for the right hand because it just makes it easier to do. Um, and it's in the that instance, and there's another spot it does it, and right here as well. That that's the only time that the left hand becomes a part of the melody. Otherwise, it's just chordal accompaniments or harmony. So let's see here. Um, the fingering would be so we got we got C and E right here, one and three. Ba da ba da ba da ba da ba 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 ba. Okay, so here, I do agree with this fingering right here. We have a G and we have a D, but we need to take our fifth finger and stretch it down to G right there. Okay, so fifth finger is on G, not on A. It's kind of in an, in an extended hand position. So the two positions right now are one and three on C and E and then two and five on G and D. So these are the two positions. Get really familiar with those if you're gonna practice this song. So and then this is not hard. These are the same two notes that the left hand's been playing the whole time. It's just C E right there, broken up. Oh, what do we got going on here? This is different. Okay. All right. So the way I would see this, if I were to break it down, we had, uh, let's see if I can see it. Some, okay. So if you look here, this is what one and three is normally on, C and E, right? So we have C and E. When we get to this spot right here, this, the E has moved up to F, and the C has moved down to B. And we keep that G in the base, in, on the fifth finger. So fifth finger is gonna be on G, third finger is gonna be on B, and first finger is gonna be on F right there and then it does that for two measures boom, boom, and then moves back I would practice going from here to here several times nice and slow because that might be a tricky section for you okay so just practice going extend and then relax extend and relax and it's just third finger is moving from C to B and first finger is moving from E to F. So it's going out and then it's coming in and then going out and then coming in. Just get really familiar with that. It happens, let's see here. It happens two times there and then it does the same thing down here at the very end. So there's three major positions that the left hand is in. 
we have the very opening, which is just C and E. And then starting in the second line, we have G and D, 2 and 5. And then starting in the fourth line, we have that big three-note chord right there, which I personally love. It's a 5-7 chord. If you don't know what a 5-7 chord is, don't worry about it. If you know what a 5-7 chord is, it's one of my favorite chords because it sounds like it wants to go right back to the one chord. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. You know, you'll learn that later on in your musical career. I love that. All right. So the way I would practice this, you know, your practice method at home, is just practice the right hand all by itself. Get really familiar when the um, fingering changes. Ah, my goodness. So, get real, obviously I'm not too familiar with it. Uh, and then get really familiar with the left hand. Once you know the melody really well, play the left hand, but sing the melody to yourself, kind of like I've been doing this whole time. A big chord. Alright, and once you're really good at playing hands by themselves, then I would try to put them together. Start off real slow at first. And make sure that that all lines up. Every time the left hand plays, make sure it lines up perfectly with whatever the note the right hand is playing. Once you have the notes and the fingering all down and you can play it pretty well, then we want to start looking at the dynamics. Dynamics just mean, you know, where do we play loud, where do we play soft, where do we grow in volume, where do we decrease in volume. And it looks like Mr. Gurlitt wants us to start off nice and loud here in the beginning. And then, you know, it doesn't really change until we get here, but he wants us to get louder so this should be our loudest point and then he wants us to decrease back to whatever the starting volume was and then he does the exact same thing here get louder and then this becomes again the loudest point right there and then we decrease in volume I mean the whole thing is pretty loud so don't be subtle about this this is this is like the hunting horns you know when you're you're on horseback and you're trying to play a a horn call over the hounds because you found the fox and you're trying to let everyone know that hey the fox is over here so you're trying to blast a horn as loud as you possibly can um let's see here so i'm going to play the thing one more time then we'll be done and you can go and practice it on your own watch this video as much as you want to try to figure out how everything is done and i will see you in the next video so enjoy this final performance here we go nice and loud Have a wonderful day.